Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Buy a Diamond Online in 2022. My name is John Pollard. I'm Senior Director of Education for the International Gemological Institute, an educational advisor for PriceScope.com, and your host for the In the Loop webinar series. By way of introduction, PriceScope is the world's largest diamond and jewelry community with over 100,000 registered members, teaching consumers how to buy diamonds for more than 20 years. More on that later, but let's jump right in. A diamond is frequently a spend of thousands of dollars, but it's still a non-commoditized product, which is difficult to represent online. Diamonds which appear the same online can be quite different in person. And even when you know all of a diamond's details, the same stone and the same ring can sell for dramatically different price points from store to store. Spoiler alert, the cheapest price is not necessarily the best deal. At the end of this session, uh, we will hope you will have all of the information you need to navigate these waters and successfully buy a diamond online in 2022. Our first section is about accelerating change. Many things have evolved or changed in the past 22 years, and especially in the past two years. These changes impacted many aspects of life, including how we interact and how we purchase things. Zoom has become a verb, changing how people and even institutions meet and conduct business. Digital purchases have replaced many face-to-face -face interactions, from items at a grocery store to auction items at Sotheby's. Sellers in all sectors have developed better online product representation, imaging, and shopping functionality. Free shipping and return policies have become normalized across most sales now. And even if we ever return to pre-pandemic conditions, e-commerce sales are expected to surpass $1 trillion this year. In terms of buying diamonds and jewelry, Signet Jewelers, the owner of K Jewelers and other mall level chain stores introduced a suite of digital solutions for shoppers called Path to Brilliance in 2021. Instead of going to the mall, users can set up virtual appointments and purchase on the website with free shipping or what they call BOPIS, which is buy online, pick up in store. This resulted in an unprecedented 61% growth in digital sales for Signet stores. At the other end of the spectrum, Tiffany & Company, High Luxury, now offers online selection and purchase of diamond engagement rings. Similarly, many independent jewelers have started listing products online and adding shopping carts. Be aware that these were companies with really no interest in e-commerce prior to the pandemic. Some of the independent retailers are not simply adding functionality to their websites. They have sophisticated search engines. They've added a dedicated sales force, taking calls and chatting with digital shoppers. They've added photography and video of inventory they have in store and operate similarly to specialized online sellers. Speaking of online sellers, online jewelry sales in the USA totaled 7.6 billion in 2021. The part of that share is going to a growing number of new startup companies entering the field, both natural and lab-grown diamond sellers. And many of these are zero inventory sellers. They list diamonds and they sell them without even seeing them first. This may not be a problem when you're buying a TV on Amazon, but it has the potential for disaster with diamonds. We'll come back to that. Finally, long-standing diamond sellers with a strong marketing and influencer game are benefiting from the, uh, from the pivot to buying and younger generations who have absolutely no problem buying online. <clears throat> Wrapping up this first section, I wanted to mention what's happening globally. The way the world has digitally pivoted has multiple outlets projecting growth of nearly 300% for online jewelry sales between 2020 and 2027. Now, one of the reasons for this projection is an app in China called WeChat. WeChat is interesting. It's a single app which is used for everything from messaging to payments, to booking travel, to buying from various marketplaces, uh, even apps within the app exist. For example, Omnichannel is this. Imagine having an app alert you when you're next to a Louis Vuitton store. It pings you, okay, you walk in, you find a bag you like, you scan the QR code, and then you walk out. While you're taking the train home, you watch videos from influencers talking about that bag. Your friends message you their opinions about the bag and you check reviews. At home, while sitting on your couch, you message a Louis Vuitton rep, you purchase the bag you like and select the delivery option, 
all from within one app. Now, this is emblematic of a new style of commerce called omnichannel, and you can recreate it somewhat when buying a diamond online. Let's talk about omnichannel and how to leverage that when buying the diamond. Now, we already live in a multi channel commerce world. Many sellers have a physical shop, they have a responsive website, social media presence, influencers, and phone, chat, and email. In an omni channel situation, those things all become interconnected. You have them all available in one place. In addition to the core components of Omni seen here, I would add one more, which is more important in some sectors than in others, but is critical to the online diamond buying experience, and that is reviews. There's nothing that builds confidence for a seller more than testimonials, and nothing that builds confidence in a buyer more than seeing that others have had a solid experience. Well, here's the great news when it comes to buying a diamond online. Only one aspect of this multi-channel experience is physical, seeing diamonds at a store. And let me be clear, that should be the first step in any diamond buying journey, no matter where you decide to buy, for reasons I'll outline next. But once you've done the initial research, every other part of the Omni experience is already digital in our multi-channel world. Ultimately, while we don't have a single Omni-channel app like China's, and not sure that we ever will, we can combine a physical visit with digital confidence building, no risk policies and guarantees for a positive experience some are calling a fidgetal experience. Combining all these resources is the best way to buy a diamond in 2022. So let's step through the fidgetal process. There are three steps to choosing wisely and confidently, A, B, and C. We'll start with A, just trustworthy research. This means to understand the diamond four C's first and foremost. They establish the value of any diamond. You can find four C's education on many websites and the basic information is reliably consistent. However, once you've learned about the four C's, there's a massive caveat that you must understand. In fact, understanding this one simple thing will help you overcome something that stumps many shoppers. Here it is. Traditional four C's assessment was never intended for online selection. It was actually designed in the 1950s. It was intended to accompany a live presentation. It's okay, we can overcome it, but it's something many new buyers struggle with understanding because they had a physical experience in a store and expect to easy, easily duplicate that online. For example, they saw a one carat J color, SI1 clarity, excellent cut diamond in a store. Now they see a grading report online that says one carat, J color, SI1 clarity, excellent cut, and think it must be the same. Here again, traditional 4Cs assessment was never intended for online selection. It was intended to supplement live viewing of the diamond. There are variables within every one of the 4Cs. For example, diamonds weighing one carat can spread differently. Now there are some controls in the cut grade, but there are visible physical differences between diamonds of the same carat weight and shape, especially when we get to fancy shapes. Traditional color assessment is done with the diamond upside down and viewed through the sides. That's because some factors can interfere with color when seen from the top. So they judge the diamond looking through the side, which means one J colored diamond could appear more colorless from the top while another could appear more like a K or an L seen from the top. With clarity, there are several overlapping grades which may or may not have inclusions a given person can see. For example, the SI1 clarity grade includes many diamonds that are perfectly clean to normal vision from certain distances and certain lighting and others which are not clean from those distances to that vision in that light. The methodologies and standards for cut grading are variable among the major labs. Let me say that again. Carat weight is standardized on scales. Color and clarity grading approaches and methodologies are uniform, but cut grading systems are completely different. You have some which are parametric, some which are based on observations, some which are linear. Um, so excellent cut essentially from one organization means something different than it from another organization and so on. And there's more. There are diamonds with a subtle brown or green tint, which is not reported on the report. 
There are diamonds with abundant microscopic pinpoints or crystal structure issues that might interfere with transparency. When seen in person, you can see these things. The hazy ones are identified as sleepy stones. The ones that have an undertone uh, get labeled BGM, which stands for brown, green, or milky. But none of these things appear on grading reports, and they're not part of traditional four C's assessment. OK, stay with me. We're learning how to buy a diamond online, and there's good news ahead. Remember, $7.6 billion worth of diamond jewelry was bought online successfully last year. The simple fact that you now understand this part about traditional four C's assessment moves you far ahead on the learning curve. Now, this is where I will underscore the importance of starting with physical experience. See properly graded loose diamonds for yourself in physical settings, not finished jewelry in department stores. Check out loose diamonds graded by GIA, AGS, IGI, or GCAL. It doesn't matter whether you're looking for natural diamonds or lab grown, the four C's remain the four C's. So get an idea of what you like, first in terms of shape, especially, and more importantly, what the wearer is going to like. Find a carat weight target that looks right to you. Find a range of color live that you're comfortable with. Clarity is simple. Know whether you want it to be perfectly clean to Superman with X-ray vision, or you're fine with it being perfectly clean to human beings, or perhaps you don't mind something somewhat noticeable. When it comes to cut quality, most diamonds receive the top cut grade, but they have notable differences. Whenever you're looking at cut live, remember the rule of the three L's. It's like real estate with location, location, location. When assessing cut quality, it's lighting, lighting, lighting. A jewelry store spotlights are logically tuned to make diamonds look great. Now take that diamond under the counter, cup your hand over it, take it in natural lighting. Check out how the diamond's character looks in different forms of lighting. Get used to that. Now, once you've done this, once you've had a physical experience and you've oriented yourselves with the four C's, you're ready to take that shopping online. There are thousands of sellers offering diamonds, gems, and jewelry. It needs to be said that the information provided on any seller's website is promotional by nature. That just means that cross-referencing is key. You should be able to be sure to check what a seller says about a product with reliable, neutral sources of education. Now, quite frankly, neutral sources are difficult to find. It may not seem that way. There are a number of websites that offer diamond buying advice. In fact, those websites are the most highly visible in searches, so they're easy to find. The basic information offered in those places is usually very reliable. In fact, what they offer is comparable from site to site, with one exception. The sites exist typically for one reason, and that reason is they were established to steer you to a seller who is going to pay them for your click-throughs and give them a percentage of your ultimate purchase. Okay, this is not a problem as long as you're aware of it. It's called affiliate marketing, marketing rather, and it's done in, in many places. It does bring me to an important distinction about PriceScope, the host of this session. Uh, Price Scope was established more than 20 years ago, before the age of affiliate marketing, before tracking cookies and click-throughs and compensation to influencers. So instead of being sustained by commissions, Price Scope lists over a million diamonds in their search engine. Sellers pay a fee to list those diamonds and pay for uh, banner ads. Uh, when it comes to trustworthy research, Price Scope is hard to beat. The entire site was built to host a community of active jewelry enthusiasts who give experienced advice to new shoppers for no compensation, simply because they love jewelry and helping others. It's a good site to bookmark. The Price Scope Forum is free. It provides a safe, no pressure environment for members to ask questions, share pictures, chat with friends, and post reviews of different vendors, brands, designers, etc. Now, logically, if you're using this resource, some members will recommend their favorite places, but the stipulation here is that nobody on the forums is getting compensation for that input or advice. They may send you to sellers who have no connection with PriceScope, and that's a standout feature as opposed to other sites. It's honest input from diamond and jewelry lovers who have black belts in buying diamonds online. 
Uh, in terms of trustworthy research, I would also give a nod to the Price Scope Education section. Uh, it's written specifically to help online diamond buyers. And more importantly, just like Price Scope's compensation model, associations with sponsors are kept separate from core education. When reading Price Scope education pages, any calls to action made on behalf of Price Scope supporters appear in blue boxes like this one with obvious links to those sponsors' websites. It's kept clean and kept separate, and the education is comprehensive. You can also do fact checking with the major diamond grading laboratories. Their education sections and blogs have very reliable information. Now, the information isn't as thorough as some of the product information provided by companies selling jewelry, but if you're seeking clinical information about what a diamond feather is, uh, what a type 2A diamond is, uh, things that are academic in nature, these are very good resources. That brings me to the actual part of research, the search engine. The best online sellers have searches with all kinds of filters that go beyond the four Cs. You can filter by price, you can filter by measurement, filter by what laboratory graded the diamond and more. Most importantly, the best online sellers publish actual images and videos of the diamonds they're selling. Those diamonds do not have stock or sample images. The seller actually went to the effort to either take the video or be provided the video by the supplier. Uh, this is to better communicate the nuances of color, clarity, and even in some cases, technical details of cut quality. A trustworthy search engine directly informs trustworthy research. They work in symbiosis. A great search engine gives you everything you need to analyze by yourself or consult with your own expert or take that information to a place like the Price Scope community, Quora, Reddit, other places out in the Omnisphere. Do be careful. The name of this game is trustworthy. Not every piece of feedback you get in certain internet spaces is totally reliable. Here's another impressive option, search aggregation. That's where diamonds offered by many sellers can be seen in one engine. Price Scope has such a search engine. It aggregates the inventories of over a half dozen online jewelers, including number one and number two in the world for a total of more than a million diamonds you can see in one place. I'm going to stop the share for just a moment and actually share another portion uh, I want to share the search for just a moment. Stand by. Here we go. So in the price scope search, I want to focus, first of all, upon the fact that you have segregated in uh, natural diamonds. You've got fancy colored diamonds, uh, lab grown diamonds here, uh, and a unique jewelry search that's, that's kind of cool. I'm going to actually go back to natural diamonds. Um, and focus in on some of the options at the left. One of the most important things and distinctions to make when buying a diamond online is knowing whether the diamond that you're seeing is in-house or whether it's virtual. Now, what that basically means, and we've got the ability to select in-house here or select virtual here, is this. An in-house diamond is actually on site uh, at the seller. So the seller has the diamond in their possession, They've already vetted it. So some of the things that we talked about, no BGM, no haziness, those things should have been disqualified. The other thing is oftentimes in-house diamonds are owned by the seller. They've already got their own money behind that stone. So they would not have purchased it unless it was a worthy uh, purchase. So that's an important distinction. Um, you also have, uh, for those of you who might have used Price Scope before, you're familiar with the HCA tool. Something that uh, I was not familiar with until recently is the fact that HCA is free here. All of these stones, if you click them in the price scope search, you get an HCA result. Uh, so they're totally free within the, the uh, search. Uh, another thing is that you have here, do notice that these are aggregated. Uh, this company, White Flash, has eight more in this class and category. So it, there's an accordion there, which is kind of nice because then you get uh, a few more options on the screen populating. If you want to save a search or send it to a friend, you have the option to have a short URL code here. And then you've also got search alerts. I could come over here 
And I could get daily emails to see when new diamonds in a class and category are uh, added. I can get a price alert. I can get alerted if the price drops. It's very, very easy to set. So you can spend time on this if you want to, but I wanted to mention it because it is the most comprehensive, uh, filterable, and flexible search of which I am aware. Moving on. Now, a trustworthy search engine directly informs trustworthy research. These things work in symbiosis and they will help you uh, with this all important component of choosing wisely. They also inform who might be a trustworthy seller. And there are many, many trustworthy sellers, but they have radically different models, different areas of focus and different policies. The key really is finding the company with that sweet spot of sales model, product focus, and policies that fit you the best. When choosing a seller, the most important thing to remember is this aha moment. Traditional four C's assessment was never intended for online selection. So the best way to choose a seller is to find one who eliminates all of these issues in red. To first eliminate the dangerous undisclosed issues you can do this by staying with in-house diamonds, which I described. A diamond is considered in-house when the seller has personally held and examined it. Now, in-house diamonds, as I mentioned, are often owned by the seller, so they've ensured it has no undisclosed issues. With that said, lots of online sellers publish lists of what we call virtual diamonds. Now, virtual diamonds are diamonds they don't own. They're located with a supplier, but they're hoping to sell. If you go forward with a virtual diamond, just ensure that the seller is not a drop shipper, meaning the stone would not be simply sent from a warehouse to your location. Somebody with that company would issue quality control to make sure that you're protected. Uh, while rare, drop shippers do exist, so they're to be avoided. To eliminate clarity concerns, you should choose VS1 clarity and above, or you can below, go below that grade with sellers that define what iClean is and stipulate whether VS2, SI1, and SI2 diamonds meet that definition of iClean on the diamond pages. You can also pick up the phone and talk to them. Color concerns are somewhat more difficult to tease out, but it's becoming more and more possible, especially if you know what range you're comfortable with in a physical store. Let's say you like G or H color. Well, to see if that range also looks comfortable to you in modern videos, most specifically, the 360 degree spin videos on neutral backgrounds, it's becoming more practical to do that. Now, be advised you can't compare one seller's diamond to another since photo setups are different, but more and more, what you see in modern video is emblematic of what you get. If you're hesitating, you can also call in and get seller assistance. They know that you're like uh, deliberating over this and some are willing to provide comparison images between stones, or simply talk you off a ledge if that's needed. The matter of proper size appearance for carat weight and overcoming the fact that most excellent cut diamonds and fancy shapes have performance deficits is solved by starting with a seller that recognizes, spotlights, and possibly curates diamonds focused on cut quality. In addition to that, some laboratories have started to adapt to this uh, AGS, IGI, and GCAL all have a grade higher than excellent. Um, the ideal grade at AGS is actually scientifically published. It's the world's only scientific metric. Uh, IGI's is parametric. GCAL uses optical analysis. Um, and so those laboratories are providing some oversight. Uh, and yet the best way to curate cut quality is really to find sellers who have a line that is specifically selected to emphasize cut. Now, following this advice will ensure you overcome the number one issue with online diamond buying that the traditional 4Cs assessment was never intended for online purchase. There's one more piece of advice as it relates to choosing wisely. Sellers who believe in the value of what they sell traditionally back up those sales with long-term support. This comment relates to natural diamond purchases only at this time, but it's very telling. An inspection period and full return policy for a practical time, usually 14 to 30 days, at this point should be something every seller provides, specifically after the pandemic. 
Uh, signs declaring no refunds or all purchases final at the cash register should be a thing of the past. In the years after purchase, some sellers also provide upgrade policies. Now, this is a nice value add since consumers typically cannot move a diamond for what it was sold to them for. It allows you to essentially return the item and use the money you paid towards a more expensive item. There are a couple of types of upgrade policies, restricted and unrestricted. In a restricted policy, you get credit for the full amount of your purchase when you upgrade to a diamond that costs, for example, twice more. Sometimes you can just double the carat weight, et cetera. The unrestricted upgrades are when you receive full credit when upgrading to any more expensive combination of the four Cs. There are other upgrade models as well, but those two are the most frequent. Uh, check out every seller's why us proposition and compare them head to head, short term and long term. There are also cash in policies offered here and there involving diamonds and even full jewelry pieces. Uh, you can't expect to recoup everything, but you should know that an average resale of a diamond back over the counter to a jeweler or to a pawn shop typically yields around 30 to 40% of what you pay. In that sense, upgrade policies and cash in policies really move the goalposts. Uh, as long as the seller is operating, those things remain there for you. My final section is quite short. It's nice to conclude that your research, your search, and your choice of seller were solid. Of course, your eyes should be the first verification when you receive the diamond. Uh, make sure it looks the color you thought it should. Make sure the shape is right. Make sure that the carat weight is right. Make sure the clarity is what you wanted. And remember the three L's, lighting, lighting, lighting. See it through a bunch of different environments to make sure that it really sings and is what you want in terms of aesthetics. That's nice, but it's also nice to confirm that you did a great job with others. In fact, in a perfect world, you could verify things were going well at the start, middle, and end of the journey, which is the goal of Omnichannel. In today's multi-channel world, we can tap into these different channels for that confidence at different times. They're somewhat separate, but Omnichannel would provide more confidence by moving all those things to a single platform where you've got help and verification along every step of the way. So in closing, I just want to mention our host one final time. Price Scope is a single platform which has all of these elements. It's a website aggregating over a million diamonds and jewelry products from the world's top sellers in its search. It has mobile functionality and it has a social network of experts and 20 years worth of reviews and knowledge compiled on the forum. Now, I frequently recommend PriceScope to friends or inquiries from people who are not in the diamond and jewelry industry. PriceScope predates social media and apps. And I think it's fair to say that the PriceScope community were the original influencers in the online diamond and jewelry sphere. They also invite me to do these webinars, so I feel I should spotlight their strong points. So I hope this has been helpful and useful. Essentially, how to buy a diamond online in 2022. The resources are out there. It's all about trustworthy resources, including trustworthy research, trustworthy searches, trustworthy sellers, and then of course, verification from either your own expert or perhaps from the Omnisphere. I hope this has been very interesting. Thank you very much. And we will see if we have some questions. All right, I've got nice compliments. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me see if I can go to... Uh, I did have a question here about uh, sellers. One thing that's important to know in note indeed is that different sellers have different models. Uh, one thing that PriceScope does do is vet uh, the vendors that, that are uh, supporting them. So for example, the sellers that you see on price scope, yes, they have been vetted. They don't just take any uh, Tom, Dick, or Harry who wants to come flog diamonds. Anything else in terms of questions? I've either been extremely boring or extremely effective.
Okay, I've got a question here. Uh, why are superficially diamonds, uh, su superficially similar diamonds, so different in price? Well, it, that's a call back to the original uh, grading assessment. As I said, the traditional four C's were never intended to be used online. They were developed in the 1950s. And it's interesting, isn't it, that VVS1 and VVS2 Clarity, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, they're very high and there's no difference whatsoever between those two levels, flawless and VS1, and yet they trade at radically different prices. And this is with no difference whatsoever. Color is similar because the subdivisions of color, um, if you're looking at a D or an E or an F uh, in a ring mounted on somebody's hand at a party, it's going to be very, very difficult to tell those apart unless you directly compare diamonds. Um, the reason was because of natural rarity. Uh, jewelers were selling based on natural rarity, and the grading labs wanted to support that with uh, nuanced subdivisions of natural rarity. So that's why diamonds that superficially appear similar uh, have different price points. I've got a question asking if price scope shows vendors in Canada. Uh, we have at least one seller who sells in Canada. Uh, I believe uh, Blue Nile does sell in Canada. Uh, otherwise, I believe that Canadian sellers are welcome to join. I know we've had at least one retailer from across the border who was listed um, in the, the search for a long time uh, when I was working uh, actually for uh, in another capacity. Uh, then the uh, next question is, can you get a similar diamond from luxury house and PS vendors? Yes. The thing about luxury houses, talk about uh, Tiffany and talk about Cartier and Harry Winston. What they did first, they were the original adopters of essentially quality control. I was, some people would tell me to say it's rarity control because what they did was they only stayed with the highest natural colors and natural clarities, no fluorescence, uh, no treatments. Um, and then they also were original adopters of high cut quality. So Tiffany and company, fun fact, they took the foreman from Harry Morse's workshop in Boston back at the turn of the 18 to 1900s. Uh, Morse was the first one who was cutting to proportions known to optimize light return. So Tiffany was on that um, literally in the, night, the early 1900s. Same thing with Cartier. This is the reason that the Blue Box, the reason that the Maisons, the reason that um, all these luxury houses got such a great reputation is because they were the original adopters of cut quality. So to the question, can you get a similar diamond? You can. Cut quality has actually come even farther. And at this point, Tiffany is not going to talk about um, light performance. They're not going to talk about hearts and arrows, for instance, and those things, because basically they've curated what they've curated for a long time. And quite frankly, the box uh, and their name is worth a premium that they're going to put on the diamond. Um, excuse me, just one moment. <coughs> I'd like to thank Price Scope for this groovy coffee mug. So arguably, you can find cut quality that is optimized even more surgically um, in vendors who are selling very, very highly uh, thought of well-specialized cuts. And there are some of those on price scope. So absolutely, uh, do be aware, the luxury houses do tend to curate very high colors and very high clarity. So if you want to go complete luxury, then you need to probably stay with collection colors and clarities as well as, as super cut quality. Um, got a great question here. What's the correlation between hearts and arrows and optical performance? The correlation between H and A and optical performance, if I can try and do an elevator on this, is that a diamond is essentially, and let me start this way, hearts and arrows for anybody who don't know, um, these are very optically precise diamonds, diamonds that are cut so that the internal facet reflections uh, in three dimensions essentially overlap with each other. And what that does is it makes the internal reflections of the diamond larger than they would be if the reflections were not overlapping and were breaking up. If you can imagine holding two mirrors so that two mirrors perfectly reflect each other back into infinity, uh, and now one mirror, if you turn it slightly, 
Now it's reflecting only half of the other mirror and it's got some of the ceiling. Okay, that's a broken reflection. So what Hearts and Arrows is attempting to do is keep those reflections unbroken. And what that does is it creates bigger internal flashes. Now, if you know how dispersion works in a diamond, spectral light is broken or uh, white light is broken into spectral colors rather. The way that your eyes see color is that that rainbow of colors strikes your pupil. And if you only see one part of the rainbow, that's the color that you see. So the rainbow of spectral colors has to be really big coming out of the diamond for you to see the colors. Hearts and arrows, uh, if done correctly, and most importantly, if paired with optimum angles for robust light return, can essentially make you see bigger, bolder flashes of color. So I hope that's interesting. I'm going to look for any others. Uh, is buying a diamond online really cheaper? Um, you know, the word cheaper is a word that I try to avoid. Uh, for sure, there are sellers who have less overhead. Um, I think and calling back to the luxury houses uh, is another thing. You know, when you pay for the blue box, I think you go into it deliberately knowing that there is a premium for something there that doesn't have to do with normal economics. At the same time, if you're going to look for the quote unquote cheapest diamond available, you can find it, but the, for the most part, you're going to be having a no frills experience. Um, I think the key here is deciding what the sweet spot is for you. Uh, you can absolutely save money um, shopping on the internet. There are also great uh, independent retailers out there who are very competitive with the internet. With that said, the evolution to digital sales has really um, made online shopping, I think, more acceptable and more convenient. <clears throat> um, how do I know where an online diamond is coming from and does it matter? Well, there are a couple things. Let's, let's talk about lab-grown diamonds first. Um, lab-grown diamonds uh, at this point are super interesting uh, because they have one of two processes and then some of them are treated after they're grown and some of them are untreated uh, after they're grown, which may or may not be interesting and which has all kinds of different opinions swirling around it. The way that you know about a lab-grown diamond, the growth process and post-growth treatment or not is to look in the comments section of the report. Uh, believe all of the labs at this point are disclosing the growth process as well as uh, post-growth treatments or not. When it comes to natural diamonds, um, origin in natural diamonds is a little bit trickier just because ironically, of the processes that were put in place to ensure to stem the flow uh, of, uh, of conflict diamonds, which was a big problem 30 years ago. Um, essentially now, let's take De Beers, for example. All of the diamonds that they sell, even the ones that are mined in Canada, go to Gaborone, uh, Botswana, for sorting. And so they're sorted and sealed from all of the different countries there, which by the way, brings in jobs. They bring in tens of million dollars, the diamond business does for, for those South African nations. And De Beers moved all their operations there. So it's a little bit more difficult to tease out where they're coming from. With that said, uh, the nice thing is there are so many controls in place these days that um, the, the, in the natural diamond world, um, the only places where those human rights violations and things are happening are in unsanctioned countries. The same countries where there's problems with oil, petroleum, uh, gold, Colton, which is um, used in every mobile device. So uh, boy, we could sit here and talk about uh, geopolitics all day, but let's stick with diamonds. And lastly, what are some things to consider when I'm trying to decide which vendor or store is right for me? Well, that's really a personal decision. But like I said, I think that the most important thing is to find, first of all, a place where you can do trustworthy research. Second of all, the search engines, the things that the store is putting online, it's absolutely key. How much information are they giving you? Is it enough ammunition that you can make a confident decision to pull the trigger? And then of course, make sure what the suite of benefits is uh, after you shop. Uh, what's the return period? What are the terms? Uh, what are the long-term benefits? Do they feel right to you? Um, and if you have no other place to ask, then you can always ask the, um, the price scope community. 
think that may be it. Uh, if there is nothing else, I want to thank everybody for uh, popping in, and I hope this session was very helpful for you. Uh, you guys have a great day, and we will see you next time. Thank you.